All righty, good evening. Welcome to Truth Right Back. Tonight is Friday, the 22nd of March. Wow, this month is almost over. Can you believe that? Where did it go? Crazy, right? Today's day number 82 of our Bible reading journey together together through the uh, Geneva 1560. It's been a really good good past few nights. A lot of a lot of conversation, a lot of discussion, a lot of checking and double checking and it's uh yeah. There there's a lot of there's a lot here, a lot to unpack. So thank you everybody for being on. Thank you, Mark. Mark's in the house. Good to see you, Mark. All right, let's see who else is on. One second. Saint was on early. Saint, God bless you. Adam, my man, the general. I'm going to call you the general. General Adam. And then Judy's in the house. Judy, I see, I feel like I haven't spoken with you in a while. What are you doing? Oh, my sister got a brand new chair. That's awesome, Judy. I'm so excited. That's why I haven't heard from you. You're like jamming right now. My sister got a brand new wheelchair. She's too cool now to talk to her big brother. But I can't wait to see it. It's a, it's like the Ferrari of wheelchairs, Mark. She is my sister's just wow. God bless you, Saint. Well, let's get s'mores in the house. We've got three chapters tonight: twenty-one, twenty-two, and twenty-three. I don't know how long they are. Let me see if Mister S'mores can check for us real quick. We are back home, so. Last night it was it was tough reading at that Denny's. Everyone was eating. I'm staring at my pancakes, looking at them get cold, and I said, "Man," but they were still good. Cold pancakes at Denny's are still good. I don't always eat like that, by the way. But when I'm on the road, I mean, I I try to avoid the golden arches, if you know what I mean. Uh, but I do I do stop sometimes at a diner. Or get some, you know, something relatively healthy like a Chipotle or something like that. But anyhow, Mr. S'mores is in the house. What are we looking at tonight as far as uh, chapters? They're not long at all. They're in the 20s, all of them. Except for, I think the first one's 15. Let's see. Yeah, the first one's only 15. Okay, okay. They're, they're short. Well, we've got... Uh, We've got some very memorable scenes that we're going to read tonight. Uh, David is at the center of uh, probably most of our readings tonight. Well, the whole drama between him and Saul. Saul's extremely jealous. He um, he has now basically vowed to kill David at all costs. David has done nothing to to hurt or to speak ill of uh, Saul. So. Very, uh, very, very interesting. Yeah, very, very jealous. Let me. There, here's a beautiful painting here. Um, this is the showbread that was really meant for. You'll remember this, but when we read this, you'll remember the story. That priest is handing. You can see he's he's almost like handing the sword and the showbread. Now these were fixtures in the temple. They were. Uh, they were there really for almost like decoration. Uh, the showbread was not was not just hey if you're hungry take some showbread you know take it was more a symbolic it was for uh, you know very religious type of events. Uh, but David was hungry, and he comes here to the priest and uh, tells him a story. He didn't tell him the truth. I mean, kind of told him a half truth, I guess. Well, you'll read it with us right now. Make a long story short, because of this act, you'll, you'll hear actually Jesus even quotes this, what David did with the showbread. Oh yeah, Jesus is going to quote from this. Absolutely. So there's some memorable scenes. Um, they're, okay, well let's get to it. 
Yeah, in, in Matthew 12, Jesus quotes uh, what's about to happen in this chapter. All right, let's begin. Let's get to it. That is a, that is a beautiful painting. I don't know where that came from. That's, that's gorgeous. I know, uh, Mark, you wanted me to show uh, Rain, the David and Goliath. I have to I have to dig it up. I haven't... can't find that picture? That was the other night. Uh, you know what? You're right. Hold on. Well, he's not I, on... He's not I, 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 what I'll do. No, he he's been he's been going to bed early. He's been going to bed early because uh, you know this, I, this one too, and you can paint them both. Hold on one second. This is this is a beautiful painting, though. Oh, T Peter's in the house, and do yeah. and oh, we got two for one. Peter, wow. Hold on one second. Friday night special. I'm trying to find the David and Goliath uh, painting that Mark really liked. And we're going to see if, hmm. well, you know what? I Peter do have it. Correct, because he was on his back. First Samuel seventeen. That was First Samuel seventeen, right? First Samuel seventeen. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, the David and Goliath. I'll, you yeah. know what? Let me let me look at it. I'll, I'll look it up after the reading, and then well, we. There he I, is. Rain just slid right in. Rain, we're we're talking about your artistic talents. We're trying to get you to see if we can. Have, have this painting of David and Goliath, which is really beautiful. And this painting that you're looking at now is with David taking the showbread and the sword. And uh, I believe 81, 81 priests are going to be killed because of this one event. Uh, I shouldn't real, ruin the story for you guys, but yeah, it's there's a lot of blood that's about to be shed uh, because of uh, just Saul's anger and hatred for um, towards David. All right, I can't find the picture. I'm sorry, guys. I'll look it up. Let's get Peter on. Peter and Dots. What? Oh, wow. Two for one special tonight, okay? Whoa, Dorothy, you're up in the, uh, let me see. She's up at the top left, I think. That's her. Oh, wow. Yeah, Peter. I sure hope it's not the top right. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Peter. Peter's on. There, she, there he is. Hold on. You can't see him. There he is. Oh, man, that's funny. How many? Okay, I just I'm curious in the chat. How many of you have actually seen the Brady Bunch? I'm just curious. Everybody has. Omar, I, I didn't get a link from you this, today. I didn't know if you were around. I, yesterday we heard nothing from you. I was worried. I didn't know if he was around until he called me and I gave him the link. <laughs> has any? So, uh, I think I think Greasy was on yesterday. Adam said he's seen the Brady Bunch. Saint yeah. says she's seen the Brady Bunch. Those were clean shows. I'm sorry, Peter. Those were clean. I loved Alice. Alice was cool. That was my favorite character on the show. Seriously, I love clean the old shows. Alice Thank was cool. She 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 was like the one that just made it all happen. Mister Ed and Gilligan was where it's at. Okay. I wish we can. I, you know, man. Can we go back to those times? Is there a way Hello. we can go back? Hello, Wilbur. <laughs> you, you know what I mean. Like, like the happy yeah. days, that's before our time, but happy look, days is awesome. Look at how men used to, hey, Peter, look at what, look at how men used to dress. I mean, yeah. think about that. Mm -hmm. that he and it's, clean out the barn. Huh? He wore a suit when he cleaned out the barn. <laughs> oh, man, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. What, what we've come, what we, what we've come to, guys. It is crazy what we've come to. But uh, anywho, oh, le, yeah. He said anywho. Yeah. How is San Francisco? We, I, I, I wasn't going to say this, guys. I'm not going to. Well, I'm going to tell you guys what happened. We ended up not going to San Francisco. Good we idea. went. Good idea. Well, based on what I've heard, I, I'm debating whether or not to post a video that was um, secretly taken. I didn't know it was being taken of an interaction that I had with a demon uh, on the university, uh, the, the campus university of Stanford. Now, there were people I witnessed what happened. Um, there was 1000% demonic activity on that campus we have it on video i don't want to disclose who it was but it's someone that's on staff and um 
was very kind, very kind until I notified him that I was a Christian. And uh, I was, I, I have not seen anything like that in probably about 10 years. I haven't actually seen a demon face to face until uh, that event. Now, I asked my friend who was videotaping, and he, he, I said, man, if you post that online, it'll go social. He said, yeah, but, you know, that's that guy, he's a professor, and, you know, it's just, it, it can cause a lot of issue. I don't want the, get, the guy to get fired, but he is 1,000. He, per, dude, I, I'm going to tell you that the, the reason I got excited about it, because everything we read about in the Bible, you know, with Jesus casting out demons and all that stuff, like, okay, you know, you think about, oh, wow, what, 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 what is it like? But when it happens to you, and when I have two eyewitnesses, and I'm talking about like altered voices, all that stuff, like config, you know, disconfiguration of the face, all every, everything you can imagine. Anyhow, make a long story short. Why was I in Stanford? Not because I want my daughter to go there, because it's a beautiful campus. It's a beautiful, it's a gorgeous campus. I mean, the architecture, the the uh, sh people go there for wedding photos. People go there for uh, graduation. For just, it's a gorgeous place. It costs sixty thousand dollars a year for tuition, and you know, obviously, it's not a it's not a very uh, conservative school. I'm sure you guys have heard of Stanford. The point I'm trying to make, though, I did not go there with interest in, you know, giving my daughter a tour of there, but we were all together. We took some pictures. We went into a, see if I say where it was. Anyhow, I'm praying about whether or not to disclose what happened, but I mean, you know, to show the video. If I put the video on our channel, it will go viral 1,000%. Uh, shouldn't do it on here. Dude, really? it will go. It. It, just tell us what happened um there, there's there's a there's a it's a huge it's a huge property okay if you ever go there and i'm telling you it's it, it's a very interesting place because on the outside it's like paradise but the people who run it the the the, the fabric of that campus is very dark very very dark matter of fact i was doing some research after we left the, the, apparently there was a mis mysterious killing of a 19 year old student uh, about almost 50 years ago uh you can pull it up uh but i was in the building where that killing took place mm -hmm. talked with someone and this particular person and he's he's a phd he's all he goes all over like if i if i told you if, even if i told you what he did people can easily google it because he's one of the head head guys but here's the here's the lesson here's the lesson that i'm going to tell everybody the, remember peter in first for uh, what is it in ephesians 6 it talks about we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers in high places right dude these are the people these are the people that are put in institutions to destroy the faith of our young teens and young adults that are going into the workforce they are split because he's in charge this is the irony Man, I want to tell you guys. Let me pray about it. I'm going to see if I, 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 if I, if I told you guys, and you would really, man, it's it was crazy. But, but here, here's the thing: the two men that were with me, we prayed. Leave when you don't know what it is. Peter, here, here's one of the, here's one of the things I'll say. I don't care what what secular school your kids went to or are going to or you or you went to. I'm going to tell you this that everything that's out there in the world today i'm talking about secular okay secular non non-church anything that's not is there to very purposefully and in a very calculated fashion destroy the faith of people yeah. i'll give you another example that i could say without getting in trouble there was a guy standing in the courtyard of the of the campus, gorgeous courtyard, and he had huge flags, huge, the biggest flags I've ever seen in my life. One was American, one was Jewish. Okay. And my the friend that I'm with says, Man, what do you guy what do you think that guy's doing? Do you think he's he's protesting or something? I said, I don't know. Let's go find out. So we walk up to him and I just said, Hey, how are you? You know, I, I told him my name. I said, Are you are you Jewish? Uh, no, actually, I asked him, have you been to Israel or, or are you from Israel? Because I was there in 2012. So I'm trying to talk to him about the Bible and stuff. The minute I engaged him, his partner, one of the guy was, uh, he, he had a, um, you know, these, uh, the ponytail bun, bun heads, you know, the, the guys that dress with the long hair on top. Anyhow, you know, the cool guys, right? Very, it's a very liberal campus. So he's there 
videotaping our exchange and we're just having a friendly conversation. I walked away and I turned to my friend and I said, because we asked the guy, what, what are you, what are you promoting? You know, what are you, what are you here for? He says, no, I'm just, I'm just a Jewish American and uh, I'm just, I just love life. The minute I left there, the minute I left there with my friend, we both looked at each other and we said the same thing. He's a plant. He's there and he's got his videographer there because you're holding these two huge flags and you just want to see how it, how, how the campus responds to it. Because it's a very, you know, I mean, it's, it's very polarizing, you know, this whole thing about pro-Israel and Palestine and all that stuff, right? The point I'm trying to make Somebody hired that guy to on a beautiful, what was it Thursday? What was it Thursday afternoon? Thursday afternoon, beautiful Thursday afternoon. Sun is out, and some guy just standing there with two huge flags with his buddy waiting to record anyone who came up to him. You're gonna tell me that's not a plant? That was a one thousand percent plant. Did someone just say, "Hey, let's let's go here to see who who you know what, what kind of response we can get from people." But I guess when they found out that no one was really, you know, coming at him with any craziness, they just packed up and left. But what I'm saying is that on these campuses, you need to pray for your kids. If they're going to these campuses, if they're going to these secular colleges, universities, you're sending them into the lion's den. Just know that. And uh, I, I, will, I will see if there's a way that I can, um, maybe I can upload the video without showing the guy's face, but you could hear him. I'm going to see if we can do something like that. My face, I don't care about me, you know, because I'm not wearing anything that affiliates me with a church or anything like that. Well, was I wearing a T? I don't know. But the point is, guys, I was, I was staring at the face of a demon, 1,000%. And I have two eyewitnesses. They saw and heard what was said, and it wasn't a human voice. So... That's those are the professors that are 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 in these institutions, just so you know. And that's where we're at today, guys. I'm telling you, it was the craziest thing. And I walked away from there and I was so like I was I never I, I wasn't scared at any time. I didn't feel like threatened. I didn't feel like he was going to touch us or anything because I know that God was with us. Um, And he came very close. He came very close, but I didn't move. I just stood there I, and I didn't yell. But the minute I started saying verses, and I was thinking of verses that had to do with blood, I think I, quote, I quoted First John 1, 7, because the, the demons hate blood. And I started quoting First John 1, 7, and the minute I talked about blood, he started hissing. Ah! Like, it was crazy. Wow. It was crazy. He hissed. Hissed. That, that is. Oh, yeah. That is and then, and then, And then some of the other students that were there, they came up to hear, hey, what's going on? They're like, don't talk to these these men like this, they're good men. Why are you, why are you, this is a, you know, they, they were like standing up for us and they were not Christians. They were just, you know, people that were passed by and they, they heard how, what he was saying to us. And, um, that was just crazy, man. So how did we get on this topic? Oh, cause you asked me if we went to San Francisco. No, oh. but we, but we were in the belly of the beast. We were in the belly of the beast. So, uh, that was my, that's my response. So you went to Oakland instead? No, man, we were in Stanford. I know. I'm just kidding. Wow. Yeah. It sounds like it's a beautiful campus. But oh, the, sh the exterior. The exterior is beautiful. But that's isn't that a picture of our world today? It's nice and shiny and gold and bright and glitters. But what's at the heart? Right? So anyhow, I, I was even not even going to tell you guys, but since you asked, I'm going to say, okay, well. And I really, I'm not, I don't want to get the guy fired or anything. I don't want to put, but I am going to be praying for him. He's on my prayer list. And, uh, oh, and then he pulled out the gay card on us too. Cause he was calling security, 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 get over here, get over here. And, and I said nothing. Like I'm saying nothing. After I quoted a couple of verses, he called security. Nobody came, but he was, he was yelling out for security. And then he said, I feel threatened. I feel threatened as a gay man. I feel threatened by these men. Who brought up anything about your sexual ori orientation? We said nothing about, but he pulled he pulled the gay card on us. He said, "As a gay man, I feel threatened by these by these individuals or something." He was just yelling, drooling, all kind. Oh man, it was crazy, crazy. You were I, in you, 
you know what? Maybe I can have the, the gentlemen that were with me, maybe I can have them on the show. But Peter, you know them. They were here sitting at the at the um at the table with us when you came over that last time. Two of them, yep. Yeah. So maybe I can have them and we you guys can ask them questions. In the mouth of two or three, but may every uh, matter be established. So you can ask you can ask them. But uh, anyhow, let's get to the reading. Uh, and no, no secular colleges for my my girls. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, hold on one second. Where are we today? So, Peter, uh, maybe you can open us up in, for, in a, a word of prayer, and just pray for uh, pray for our young, our young people, man. These people going into colleges, universities, campuses. Uh, and I heard I heard a statistic, and I, I I don't know where it came from, but I heard that that their high percentage, uh, 70, 80 percent plus of, of kids who are raised in a, in a Christian home, they go to secular colleges, lose their faith, their faith, not their salvation. They lose their faith within three years of going to a secular campus. They lose their faith. And I'm talking about good Christian kids that just, you know, like my girls, I, you know, I, I thank the Lord for my girls. They're not perfect, but they love God, you know, and it's just, you know, they've been raised to, to know God, to fear him, to love him. But these professors day in and day out, this it's on a, there's an agenda. It's a very clear agenda, guys. Yeah. And and uh, I, I don't know how many have 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 seen what, I, what we saw that day. But, man, it was it was in black and white. It was in black and white, man. It was just crazy. Anyhow. Uh, yeah, pray, pray for, pray for our, our young people, brother, and uh, we'll get to the reading. I'm excited about the reading. God, thank you, Omar, and thank you, Rain, for your beautiful prayers. Really love your prayers. Lord Jesus Christ, who suffered and died for our sins, that we may live. Oh Lord, if during our life we have sinned. Not if, oh Lord, during our life we have sinned in word, deed, and thought. Forgive us in your goodness and love. All our hope we put in you. Protect your servants from all evil. We submit to your will and into your hands. We commend our souls and bodies. For a Christian, for a Christian's end, for a Christian end to our lives, peaceful, without shame and suffering. And for a good account before the awesome judge, judgment seat of Christ. We pray to you, O Lord, bless us, be merciful to us, and grant us all life eternal. The ages of ages, one God. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, we love you, Lord. We thank you for Omar's uh, safe return, him and his family. <coughs> we we pray for um, that that gentleman on the campus that was giving Omar a hard time, and we pray that we pray that you speak to his heart and. And just let them know your love and let them know that there is a, a more excellent way. We pray for we pray for our young our young children going into going into high school, going into college, university, that you'd be able to to guide them and if possible, keep them out of these uh, secular government funded educational facilities and uh, give them a course of direction that is a godly, a godly course. Father, we look forward to your, your reading, the reading of your word this evening. And may it encourage our hearts and just give us wisdom, discernment, and strengthen our faith. We love you, Lord, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. Well, let's get right to it. The showbread. Uh, 
it's going to be a very interesting chapter and Jesus even quotes Jesus will quote or he he did quote what happened here in the in this chapter so uh let's pay close attention and David is uh he's on the move he's on the move that Saul is after him and he'll stop at nothing to kill uh his his most faithful servant really I mean David was very loyal and honored um Saul he had up matter of fact David had opportunities I think we'll read of tonight to kill Saul and uh and he didn't he didn't do him out of respect and, and love for 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 the king so let's take uh let's go go ahead and get the verses on screen mark you have the ESV I have both 15 mm. verses Okay, Peter, why don't you uh, lead us in that? Uh, go ahead and read it out of the King James. It's uh, chapter 21 of 1 Samuel. Chapter 21 of 1 Samuel. And I'll have the Geneva 1560 on the screen. Uh, let me give you the intro briefly here. It says, David fleeth to Nob, to Ahimelech the priest, that's the one who gives the sword and the bread to David. Uh, wow. Wait till you see what happens to him. Uh, David f fleeth to Nob to him like the priest. He getteth of him the showbread to satisfy his hunger. Doeg, bad guy, Doeg, Saul's servant, was present. And that right there, that was a nail in the coffin. David knew that Doeg was going to uh, run back to Saul and tell him everything. Uh, David fleeth to King Achish, and there fainteth himself mad. Probably one of the funniest, funniest uh, stories in the Bible, if you can use your imagination and um, imagine what David did to try to make himself look crazy, like insane. <laughs> Imagine he, he tried to put on his best his best uh, performance there to make himself look insane. That's going to happen in this chapter. Who says the Bible is not uh, exciting, right? So let's go ahead and get the verses on the screen. And Peter, as soon as you're ready, take it away. And First Samuel chapter number 21 out of the uh, King James. The floor is yours. Wonderful. Thank you, Omar. Then came David to Nob of Ahimelech, the priest, and Ahimelech was afraid at the meeting of, of David and said unto him, Why art thou alone and no man with thee? And David said unto him, Ahimelech, the priest, The king hath commanded me a business and hath said unto me, Let no man know anything of the business whereabout I send thee. And what I have commanded thee, and I have appointed my servants to such and such and such a place. Now, therefore, what is under thine hand? Give me five loaves of bread of, of mine hand, and what there is present. And the priest answered David and said, There is no common bread under mine hand, but there is a hallowed bread. And if the young men have kept themselves at least from women. And David answered the priest and said unto him, Of a truth, women have been kept from us about these three days since I came out, and the vessels of the young men are holy, and the bread is a, man is a manner of common. Yea, though it were sanctified this day in the vessel. So the priest gave him hallowed bread, for there was no bread there but the show bread, and was taken from before the Lord, <coughs> taken before the Lord to put hot bread in the oven when it was taken away. Now a certain man of the servants of Saul was there that day, detained before the Lord, and his name was Doi. An Edomite, the chiefest of the herdmen that belonged to Saul. And David said unto Ahimelech, And there are not here under thine hand spear or sword? 
for I have neither brought my sword nor my weapons with me because the king's business re required haste. And the priest said, The sword of Goliath the Philistine, whom thou slewest in the valley of, of Elah, uh, behold, it is here wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. If thou wilt take that, take it, uh, for there is no other save that here. And David said, there is none like that. Give it, give it me. And David arose and fled that day in, uh, for fear of Saul, and went to Achish, the king of Gath. And the servants of Achish said unto him, "Is not this David, the king of the land?" And then did, did they not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, "Saul hath slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands." And David laid up these words in his heart and was sore afraid of Achish, the king of Gath. And he changed his behavior before men and fiend himself mad in their hands and, and scrabbled on the on the doors of the gate and let his spittle fall, fall down upon his beard and said Achish unto his servants, Lo, ye see the man is mad, wherefore then have ye brought him to me? Have I need of a mad? Have I need of madmen that ye have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? Okay, that was uh, <coughs> that was chapter twenty one, and now we're, we will continue to Peter. Thank you. no, no, thank you. No, I appreciate that. Thank you for. I was just thinking about the what you read about David making himself insane at the uh, you know at the end. Um, the funny thing is here, Mark. Oh, Mark's there as well. Hold on one second, Mark. I want to read. I want to hear what yours said in uh, in an earlier passage. But going back to this. Why did David go to the Philistines? Why would he go to the enemy? Because they were enemies, right? What would cause him to be so desperate? I want to hear what you guys think, that he would run to the enemy uh, for help. So Why would Saul, he do that? Make Saul look bad or no? I, he was more afraid of Saul. Right. He was more afraid of Saul but somebody in in the camp they they recognized they recognized him and they said isn't this david the one that they sang you know that oh he you know Saul killed a thousand david kills 10,000 and then when david realized oh man they 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 figured me out then he acts crazy he starts writing on the wall he starts drooling i mean I, man this would have been so funny just to sit, see it to see it happen but I want to I want to go back here to verse. I want to hear what Mark says here. In um, there was a verse that was a little strange here. Okay, uh, David goes and he asks for bread, and basically, Ahimelech says, "I don't have any common bread. I don't have regular bread. I got the holy bread. You know, the sanctified bread, but I don't have I don't have common bread." you know, regular bread. And David said, well, I, you know, I, I need I need to eat. He says, well, it's, I, I can only give this bread to, to those those who've been pure, who haven't been, been with a woman. And David says something to the effect, well, none of, none of us have been with women for the past two or three days. So we're clean. And uh, no offense to the women, but the point what I'm trying to make is that men that were going to battle looked... Uh, they 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 preferred not to have any any of their strength diminished in other words they needed they needed to be strong to go to battle and i guess it may have something to do here with being clean or being holy as well so he says i have we haven't been with women for 3 days 
But then he goes on and says a bunch of other stuff that I, I kind of got lost as Peter was reading here because it's, it's, it's different from what the Geneva says. So, Mark, can you, in verse 5, can you read it from the ESV and let's see if, it, if it's close to what I have here? Yeah, it says, And David answered the priest, Truly women have been kept from us, as always when I go on an expedition. The vessels of the young men are holy, even when it is ordinary an ordinary journey. How much more today will their vessels be holy? Oh, that's that's where I got lost because it said the Geneva says it in a very strange way. He says they, they say David that David then answered the priest and said unto him, Certainly women have been separate from us these two or three days since I came out, and the vessels of the young men were holy, though the way were profane. And that word profane, I guess now I'm hearing you say that it means like even if it wasn't a religious day it was a regular day they have still kept themselves from women how much more shall then shall everyone be sanctified this day in the vessel or his vessel uh so when peter was reading it i didn't i didn't get i didn't hear that peter any of that did, did the king james just cut it all off yeah so it says and um and the vessels of the young men are holy, and the bread is in a manner common, as though it were sanctified to stay in the vessel. Very strange. And I, Mark and I, we had this issue last night when Michal was uh, talking to her father, Saul. Saul was looking for David. She came up with some weird story. And, you know, anyhow, her answer to her dad king saul was very very hard to to figure out so then we we looked at a few different versions and we finally you know put put two and two together but this is just weird that last part of what you just read in verse five i don't i don't understand exactly what the king james is saying there um Mar mark so your yours yours was of the three of the them i can understand more but i'm still trying to figure out what what he means and is it the bread they're talking about or the or the bodies of the young men at the yeah, end of the, that verse? Yeah, he wants to be strong. So first, hold on one second. First, this is this first Samuel 21, 5. Give me a second. Yeah, he wants to be strong for the battle. That's how we, last night was the same thing, Peter. Some of these readings are very just very <clears throat> complex you know you have to you have to like read it reread it okay the niv says david replied indeed women have been kept from us as usual whenever i set out the men's bodies are holy even on missions that are not holy how much more so today well what does that mean what is today is today a special day, day um, of battle. The, the new living translation says don't worry david replied i never allow my men to be with women when we are on a campaign and since they stay clean even on ordinary trips, how much more on this one? Yeah, so this is very... Because uh, then when the way Peter read it, Peter says, um, he said the, men, the young men are holy and the bread, and the bread is in a, ma is in a, is in a manner common. That, is, that doesn't even talk about the, the men. It's now it's talking about the bread. The bread is in a manner common, yea, though it were sanctified this day in the vessel. So, on the King James, it's actually not even talking about the young men. It's talking about bread. Peter, do you see what, I, what, I'm, what I'm trying to point out here? Yeah. With all these different verses? Uh, let me look at the Amplified. Sometimes they... David answered the priest, Be assured that women have been kept from us in these three days since I set out. And the bodies of the young men were consecrated, ceremonial, ceremonially clean, parentheses, Although it was an ordinary, parentheses, unconsecrated journey, so how much more will their vessels be holy today? That, once again, makes reference to the men, not the bread. So there's definitely something weird here, guys. I don't know if you guys can figure it out. But it seems like the end of verse 5, and I hate, I hate to, you know, like really, you know, dig on this, but I mean, that's what we're, we're supposed to be doing, right, when we read the Bible? So, any uh, 
Any idea, Pete? <coughs> I mean, we can check the Hebrew, but I just got see. Look at look at the Aramaic Bible in plain English. And the priest answered David and said to him, "There is no common bread under my hands, but the bread of holiness is." If the young men have kept themselves from the offering, it doesn't even say the rest of the stuff. Totally just chopped it off. American Standard Version, did we read that already? No, we did. And David answered the priest, said unto him, Of a truth, women have been kept from us about these three days. When I came out, the vessels of the young men were holy, though it was but a common journey. How much more than today shall their vessels be holy? It's making reference to the, the bodies, the vessels of the men. And uh, going back to the King James, just... I, the only way I can read that, unless I'm totally not seeing it, but it sounds like you're you're talking about the bread at the end of that verse, Peter. Uh, the King James. Uh, I'd have to look into this, guys. This is this is a uh, I'm, I'm stumped on this one. The New King James says the same thing, Peter. Pretty much, it says. Then David answered the priest and said. To him, truly, women have been kept from us about three days since I came out, and the vessels of these young men are holy, and the bread is, in effect, common, even though it was consecrated in the vessel this day. So, once again, it's talking about the bread. I don't know. Yeah, so... <laughs> so, for some, for some reason, the, uh, like the, the bread has been discounted. The bread has been discounted from being sanctified. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't really understand why. The the question uh, on this verse is, <clears throat> what is holy? Uh, with with a with a chap with a verse like this, the the best thing I I could do, and I always go back to context, and that's how we were able to figure out figure out what what uh, Saul's daughter was saying to him. Uh, if you read if you read this, Mark, do me a favor, Mark. In your, in the ESV, can you read verse four, five, and six together? Four, five, and six together, and let's see if that maybe helps us understand what's going on here. <clears throat> and the priest answered David, "I have no common bread on hand." But there is holy bread. If the young men have kept themselves from women. Okay, that's in, that was quoted. And David answered the priest, Truly women have been kept from us, as always, when I go on an expedition. The vessels of the young men are holy, even when it is an ordinary journey. How much more today will their vessels be holy? Okay, verse 6. Oh, sorry. So the priest gave him the holy bread, for there was no bread there but the bread of the presence, which is re which is removed from before the Lord to be replaced by hot bread on the day it is taken away. Okay. Uh, here, the, the Geneva notes may help us uh, solve this mystery here. Let me read it. Let me read it from the Geneva. Peter did a great job. I just want to read it with the notes here. And the priest, that's Ahimelech. By the way, guys, we the picture that I showed earlier, the picture that when when before Peter started reading, that's Ahimelech. That's David and wearing the black the the black armor. Looks like he's got some kind of cape on. And uh, and also there's a sword. Can you guys see the sword that Ahimelech's handing over to him? And the bread, can you see where the bread came from? Can you guys see that? Yeah, the plate. From the plate, which was on the table. So it's holy bread. It's very holy bread. That sword was the sword that David used to, ki to, to uh, not to kill Goliath, but to cut his head off. So David didn't tell Ahimelech the truth. He said, oh, Ahimelech said, what are you doing here, David? And he said, oh, the king sent me on a secret mission, on a secret mission. I can't tell anybody. 
So poor Ahimelech says, oh, okay, well, if the king sent you, yeah, what can I help you with? And King uh, David says, well, I'm hungry. Give me bread. He said, I don't have bread, but I have holy bread. Okay, I'll take it. Ahimelech says, well, you can only take it if, you've been, if you're clean. And then that's the conversation we're talking about. And then after David asked for a sword and... Anyhow, so this this is the context. If you guys can just put yourself here in the story and, and just kind of follow along. Now, let me read. Omar. Re yeah. That that sword is too small. It was too much, small. Too small. Much, much bigger than that. Yeah. That looks like a toothpick for Goliath. Much bigger than that. Yeah. yeah. The sword, when he's laying on the ground, was double the triple. Right. Right. Okay, no, but I'm glad, Peter, you're very observant. Okay, so let's go now that we have the story. This is the only thing I can do, guys, because I don't I don't know how else to figure stuff like this out. Just read it and look at the context. Okay, so let's go to verse 4 from the Geneva. And the priest answered David and said, There is no common bread under mine hand, but here is hallowed bread, comma. If the young men have kept themselves, comma, at least from women. Now, there's a note here. It says, if they have not com companied with their wives. Well, obviously, you know, physical, right? If they're not accompanied with their wives. Verse 5. David then answered the priest, Ahimelech, and said unto him, Certainly women have been separated from us these two or three days. He does, he's not exact. He's saying these two or three days since I came out and the vessels of the young men were holy. The young men, there's a letter D there. It says their vessels are their bodies. We kind of figured that out. So he says, since I came out and the vessels of the young men were holy, comma, though the way were profane, comma, and how much more then shall everyone be sanctified this day in the vessel. Uh, the word profane there means ordinary, not a holy, not a, you know, you think about Bible versions, for example, the, uh, I, I, this, will, this will be a perfect example of what I'm trying to say. The Latin Vulgate, the Latin Vulgate, you want to wonder where, why does that version of the Bible, the Latin Vulgate, uh, fourth century, right, by uh, St. Jerome. Why is it called the Vulgate? That comes from the same root word of vulgar, doesn't it? Well, yes and no. The, the Vulgate meant that it was the Bible of the common person, the Bible of the common man. So that's why it was called the Vulgate. The Latin Vulgate Bible, the earliest surviving manuscript of a Latin Bible, receives its name from the Latin term Edito Vulgata, meaning common version. At the time of its commissioning, Latin was used in both scholarly and common forms, and the Vulgate was written in everyday Latin. So I'm bringing that up because here the word profane doesn't mean, you know, what what you may think it means. It's It just means common. So going back to read this quickly david answers the priest and said unto him certainly women have been separated from us uh these two or three days since i came out and the vessels of the young men were holy though the way were profane and how much more then shall everyone be sanctified this day in the vessel so apparently this was a special day maybe david's referring to the fact that hey we're here in the temple you know we wouldn't be here in such a holy you know, clean, separated place. If we were, if we were, if we were dirty, verse six. So the priest gave him hallowed bread, holy bread, for there was no bread there, no common bread, save the show bread that was taken from before the Lord to put hot bread there the day that it was taken away. So, um, the King James translation, the King James translation, I don't get that same message that I just read from this, Peter. I don't, I don't get the same. Maybe I'm missing something, or maybe the way you read it, I, I, I don't know, but I don't get that. You want to read four, five, and six one more time, just, just quickly. Sure, yeah. Thank you. 
And the priest answered David and said, there is no common bread under my hand, but there is hallowed bread, if the young men have kept themselves at least from women. And David answered the priest and said unto him, of a, of a truth, women have been kept from us about these three days since I came out, and the vessels of the young men are holy, and the bread is in a manner common, yea, though it, though it were sanctified this day in the vessel. So the priest gave him hollow bread, and there was no bread there but the show bread, and it was taken from before the Lord, and to put hot bread in the day when it was taken away. There's, there's, um, there's some, there's some, there's some commentaries um, that say um, regarding uh, the bread is in a manner of uh, the, the the bread is in a manner common. Um, some people, is, uh, some commentaries are saying that that it's just it's just bread. Bread is just bread, but but you know compared to us, we you know we are holy. But it's the bread, it's it's just bread. You know we need to eat. When you when you read it, it it sounds more like the end of verse five it has to do with the, the the bread and not the not the men. And when I read it in the Geneva, and I think when Mark read it in the ESV, I can't remember, but it almost sounded like it was talking about the 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 bodies of the men, not the bread itself. Read the end of verse five again. Let me read it to you, and then Mark, you've got your verse five as well, right? Yep. What's the end of your? Uh, just give us five. Just give us five by itself. What does it say? Whoops, hang on a second here. Okay. You want you want the whole thing? Just five. Just five by itself. The whole thing. Yeah. Okay. And and David answered the priest. Truly, women have been kept from us, as always, when I go on an expedition. The vessels of the font of the young men are holy even when it, it, it is an ordinary journey. How much more today will their vessels be holy? I don't get bread out of that reading, Peter. I don't get bread out of that. I don't, I mean, maybe I'm missing something, but I know the grammar, Hebrew grammar is not the same as English grammar. So we'd have to basically hunt down what the antecedent is, and it, that it's a nightmare to try to figure that out, because because it's like we can know English grammar, but it, this is written in Hebrew. So I I don't even. It's just it's hard, Pete. This stuff is hard. But anyhow, the reason I brought it up is because you read the King James. I'm following along in the Geneva, and when you get to the end of verse five, I. You're like, I wow, just where, where'd that come from? Right. So, guys, listen. I know that it takes us long to read these couple chapters each night, but we dig. I don't see other. I mean, honestly, I don't see a lot of people doing what we do. Like, you know, there's Bible reading programs everywhere. They're all over the internet, and I'm sure there's there's people that like us that you know like really study and dig and do that, but. Like, we don't call each other before the call and say, what are we going to talk about tonight? We just, we open the box, we crack it open with you guys online. And you get to, and you get to be part of what we do. I mean, Mark, I didn't call you today. I know you're supposed to. And you didn't send me the link. You know what? I, I've been cooking, man. I was busy. I was, I was busy, Pete. So anyhow, guys, uh, do we have a... What do we do? Just come back to it? Yep. We'll come back to it. Let's park on it. So, Peter, um, other than that, uh, Mark, verse 11, I, I wanted to hear your, I think it was verse 11, man, I'm, I'm totally, oh, yeah. Uh, verse 11, is that one, hold on a second. David considered these words, was sore afraid of Achish, the king of Gath. He changed his behavior before them and feigned himself mad in their hands, scrabbled on the doors of the gate and let his spittle fall down upon his beard. Then said Ahimelech unto his servants, Lo, ye see this man is beside... Oh, I, that's verse 14. Peter, 
The King James does not say this man is beside himself in, in verse 14. It says something like this man is mad, right? This man is mad. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I love that, that expression beside himself. Is it Geneva responsible for that expression that people say, oh, you're beside yourself? I wonder if this was the first use in English of that that uh, phrase, beside yourself. I wonder. I don't, I don't know. This is 1560, okay? You're talking 500 years ago. What does it mean to be beside yourself? Well, the, the King James does not does not uh, use that wording in verse 14. Uh, Mark, what do you have in the ESV on verse 14? 51, 15. Behold, you see the man is mad. Just like yeah, the so, King James. So, yeah, so here it is, uh, beside yourself. 51, 50, yep. That's it. All right, guys. Well, let's go to the next chapter. Thank you, Peter. That was exciting. Took us uh, fifty eight minutes to get to one chapter, but hey, we it's all good. It's all good. I was with pa I was with Pastor Santos today for two and a half hours. All we read was Leviticus seventeen and eighteen. Whoa! In Spanish, yeah, two and a half hours. I'm gonna get you start taking Evelyn Wood. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay, uh, chapter twenty two. I'll go ahead and read that. Mark, you have your ESV ready? Yep, twenty three verses. All right. Awesome. Peter, you got your King James. Let me go ahead and get this. And I'll look at the notes here, guys. I know you have some comments here. I'm not ignoring you guys. I just, I'll, I'll look at them in a second. Chapter 22. Chapter 22. The intro says, David is on the run, man. This guy's, okay, wow. Okay, chapter 22. Um, David hideth himself in a cave. Many that were in trouble came unto him. Oh, yeah, the bad news bears. Everyone comes, everyone with problems comes to him. They're all hiding in the cave. That's funny. Misery loves company, apparently. They're all in the cave. I think this is the chapter. Anyone who had problems, just come. Hey, let's go hang out with David. If he's hiding, how would everyone know where he's at, though? I always wondered that. Let's let's read it. Let's see if we can figure this out. Dueg, the 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 spy, because he was, you know, he's he's going to tell, he's going to run and tell Saul everything. So Duek accuseth Ahimelech, Saul causeth the priest to be slain. Abiathar escapeth. Wow. Wait till you see how many people die because of this, this event right now. All right, chapter 22. You go here, one second. Mm. All right. So David runs, goes to a cave. All right. Verse 1. David therefore departed thence and saved himself in the cave of Adullam. When his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. And there gathered unto him all men that were in trouble, and all men that were in debt, and all those that were vexed in mind, and he was their prince. And there were with him about 400 men. So hold on a second. David's on the run. He's hiding from Saul. He, def he finds this little cave in Adullam. People hear, oh, hey, where's David? Oh, he's in. A, he's hiding from Saul. He's in a cave. He's he's worried, you know, he's going to get killed. Hey, you know what? I I got problems too. Let me go hang out with him. That's what, it, that, I mean, that's pretty much what it says. Mark, what do you have in verse, uh, I got to hear that in verse uh, 2. What do, what, is you, what do you have? It says, and everyone who was in distress and everyone who, who was in debt and everyone who was bitter in soul gathered to him and he became commander over them. And there were, and they, and there were with him. That's weird. And there were with him about four hundred men. Oh, and there, there at the place, and there were with him about four hundred men. There at the right. place of the cave. Yeah. So talk, talk about misery loves company, right? Man, they all, they're all there. Hey, David, we're miserable too. Can we hang out with you? All right. Verse three. Thank you, Mark. All right. I told you the Bible's exciting, right? Okay, hold on. Let's go to verse 3 now. 
And David went thence to Mizpah in Moab and said unto the king of Moab, I pray thee, let my father and my mother come and abide with you till I know what God will do for me. And he brought them before the king of Moab, and they dwelt with him all the while that David kept himself in the hold. Uh, in the hold that is in Mizpah, which was a stronghold. Uh, verse 5, And the prophet Gad said unto David, Abide not in the hold, but depart and go into the land of Judah. Then David departed and came into the forest of Hareth. And Saul heard that David was discovered. And the men that were with him and Saul remained in Gibeah under a tree in Ramah, having a spear in his hand. And all his men stood about him. Let me read that one more time. Verse 6. And Saul heard that David was discovered, comma. And the men that were with him, the tricky part, guys, and I know I did this last night. I just, I want to make sure I know who him, the men that were with him, and Saul. Huh. I'm going I'm to try to read this again. Okay, so, and Saul heard that David was discovered, comma, and the men that were with him, I, I'm assuming that's David, comma, and Saul remained in Gebeah under a tree in Ramah, comma, having a spear in his hand, comma, and all his men stood about him. So there's men with David, and there's men with Saul, and all of this is in one sentence. So forgive me if I'm over analyzing this but i i just want to make sure who the who's with who uh mark you're reading this your verse six is probably a lot easier than mine what does your verse six say it's now now saul heard that david was discovered and the men who were with him saul was sitting in in, at uh, gilbeth under the tamarisk tree on the height on the height with his spear in his hand and all his servants were standing about him so the beginning part of the hymn was david yes. all the men that were with him yes i remember this from the 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 the, the 10 part story of the bible or whatever and i remember yeah. he's in the cave and he and then saul comes in the cave and he stands in front of him he says go ahead and try and kill me wow i remember that oh yeah well, guys, thank you for being, for your patience. Thank you, Saint. Listen, I I truly do not purposely try to be on here longer than I need to, guys. I you know I but I don't I don't want to leave the reading and then later say, man, I should have said something. So that's why I'm asking Peter and Mark to you know to bear with me and say, okay, what's going on here? So the antecedent, very important, and. Maybe maybe what I'm doing with Pastor Santos is affecting me a little bit because he actually in his in his Spanish work that he's been doing for 40 years, he what he would do in in a situation like this, he would he would put italics. For example, his his version and, and I don't have it with me. I could pull it up, but his version would say, "And Saul heard that David was discovered, and the men that were with him, uh, David, he would put in in uh, in italics." To so, so the reader would know who the him was. He's not adding to God's word. He's not altering it. He's just making it simpler to follow the story. That's all. Uh, but anyhow, I think we figured it out. Thank you, Mark. Let's go to verse 7. And Peter, you got the next chapter, brother. Very treasure. Amen. <laughs> Saint says you guys are going for treasure. Amen for that. All right. Uh, verse 7. Verse 7. Ah, uh, all right. And Saul said unto his servants that stood about him, Hear now, ye sons of Benjamin. Will the son of Jesse give every one of you fields and vineyards? Hold on a second. Oh, so Saul Saul is coming up, and he's ta- he's, he's he's talking to his troops. Saul said unto his servants that stood about him, Hear hear now, ye sons of Benjamin. Will the son of Jesse, he's talking about David. I know it says Eshai there, Eshai and Jesse, same thing. Will the son of Jesse give every one of you fields and vineyards? 
Will he make you all captains over thousands and captains over hundreds? He's basically bragging that, hey, David can't do any of those. I am King Saul. I could do all those things. Verse 8, that all ye have conspired against me, and there is none that telleth me that my son hath made a covenant with the son of, Be of Jesse. And there is none of you that is sorry for me or showeth me that my son hath stirred up my servant to lie in wait against me as appeareth to stay. So I, I, I did not read this properly. Let me just read it one more time. But basically Saul is standing up in front of all his servants and he's saying, don't you guys feel sorry for me? My own son has betrayed me and none of you, none of you, I can't count on a single one of you to... Uh, to tell me the truth. You're all you're all against me, all of you. I mean, that's pretty much what he's saying. That's his his sentiment. So let me read it again. And verse 7, And Saul said unto his servants that stood about him, Hear now, ye sons of Benjamin, will the son of Jesse give every one of you fields and vineyards? Will he make you all captains over thousands and captains over hundreds, that all ye have conspired against me? And there is none that telleth me that my son hath made a covenant with the son of Jesse? And there is none of you that is sorry for me or showeth me that my son hath stirred up my servant to lie in wait against me as appeareth this day. Verse 9, then answered Dueg, this is the guy, the spy, then answered Dueg the Edomite, who was appointed over the servants of Saul, and said, I saw the son of Jesse when he came to Nob, to Ahimelech, the son of Ahitub, Ahimelech the priest, who asked counsel of the Lord for him and gave him victuals food and he gave him also the sword of Goliath the Philistine so basically Doeg is telling King Saul everything then the king sent to call Ahimelech the priest the son of Ahitub and all his father's house to wit the priests that were in Nob and they came all to the king and here it is Saul said hear now thou son of Ahitub and he answered here I am my lord he's talking to the priest Ahimelech. Then Saul said unto him, Why have ye conspired against me, thou and the son of Jesse, and that thou hast given him victuals and a sword, and hast asked counsel of God for him, that he should rise against me and lie in wait as appeared this day? He's saying, Ahimelech, you helped my enemy. You fed him. You armed him. You even go to God for him to see what, to give him, you know, spiritual advice. To show him what God, you know, what God says regarding, you know, all of this. Verse 14. And Ahimelech answered the king and said, Who is so faithful among all thy servants as David, being also the king's son-in-law, and goeth at thy commandment, and is honorable in thine house? So Ahimelech is shocked. He's saying, what do you mean I helped your enemy? He's your son-in-law. He's your most faithful servant. How did I betray you, king? Verse 15. Have I this day first begun to ask counsel of God for him? Be it far from me. Let not the king impute anything unto his servant, nor to all the house of my father. For thy servant knew nothing of, of all this, less nor more. Then the king said, Thou shalt surely die, Ahimelech, thou and all thy father's house. So King Saul didn't want to hear anything. He said, Ahimelech, stop talking. You're dead. Matter of fact, you and all the priests that are with you are going to die. Verse 17, And the king said unto the sergeants that stood about him, Turn and slay the priest of the Lord, because their hand also is with David, and because they knew when he fled and showed it not to me. The servants of the king would not move their hands to fall upon the priests of the Lord. Nobody could believe that King Saul told, told them, the sergeants, the soldiers, to kill these priests, these innocent priests that were just, they did nothing wrong. And King Saul commands the sergeants to, to kill, kill these priests now. Nobody moves. Well, there's one who will move. Verse 18. Then the king said to Doeg, Turn thou and fall upon the priests. And Doeg the Edomite turned and ran upon the priest and slew that same day fourscore and five persons that did wear a linen ephod. 
Doeg says, hey, none of your other men will do it. I'll kill them all. He killed 85 men of God right there by himself. That's, I told you, it was bad. Verse 19, also Nob, the city of the priests, smote he with the edge of the sword, both man and woman, both child and suckling, both ox and ass and sheep with the edge of the sword. So it's not only the 85 priests that he killed. He said, Nob, the city of the priests, smote he with the edge of the sword, man, woman, child, suckling, ox, ass, and sheep with the edge of the sword. How many did he kill? That's an interesting question. I don't know. But one of the sons of Ahimelech, the son of Ahitub, whose name was Abiathar, escaped and fled after David. So there was one who made it alive out of Doeg's hands. And he was the son of the priest, Ahimelech. His name was Ahitub. He escapes and he goes to find David. His name is Abiathar. And Abiathar, verse 21, showed David that Saul had slain the Lord's priest. And David said unto Abiathar, I knew it the same day when Doeg the Edomite was there that he would tell Saul, I am the cause of the death of all the persons of thy father's house. David felt so bad. Verse 23, he tells Abiathar, Abide thou with me, and fear not, for he that seeketh my life shall seek thy life also, for with me thou shalt be in safeguard. David says, Abiathar, just stay by my side. You'll be fine. Verse 23. Man, this is, I'm telling you, some intense stuff that goes down here. This is our last chapter of the night. Peter, you want to read that uh, chapter 23? And let me see if Mark's got anything for us. Mark, how, how do we look? No, everything's good. <laughs> Crazy, right? Yep. That guy Doig is bad news. Yep. I didn't know he killed all those other people, too. I, I always just thought he killed 85. Peter, any idea how many people Doug Duegg killed? Not Doug, Duegg. 85. Didn't it say 85? N no, it said more. See if Peter can Peter, see if you can pull it up. And David felt so guilty. I'm sure, I mean, there's probably an estimate somewhere. The city of Nob, he they mentioned. crazy stuff Omar, it, was, it was probably it was probably close to a thousand wow and he did it by himself he did it by himself mm -hmm. yeah. wow <sighs> okay chapter 23 uh let's see what happens intro says this is one of the by the way guys we, we only have a couple more days in uh first samuel so it's coming to a close all right, David chaseth the Philistines from Keilah. David departed from Keilah and remaineth in the wilderness of Zaph. Jonathan comforteth David. Oh, I didn't think they were going to see each other anymore. Jonathan is Saul's son, remember? Saul's enterprise is broken in pursuing David. Oh, what happens here? How many verses, Mark? 23. 23, okay. 23, chapter 23. 23 verses. Peter, the floor is yours. Thank you, Omar. Okay, we have uh, 1 Samuel chapter 23, verse 1 from the King James Version. Then they told David, saying, Behold, the Philistines fight against Caleb, and they rob the, thresh the threshing floors. Therefore David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go smite these Philistines? And the Lord said unto David, Go and smite the Philistines and save Caleb. And David's men said unto him, Behold, we be afraid here in Judah. How much more than if we come to Caleb against the armies of the Philistines? Then David inquired of the Lord yet again. And the Lord answered him and said, Arise, go down to Caleb, for I will deliver the Philistines into thine hand. So David and his men went to Caleb and fought with the Philistines and brought away their cattle and smote them with a great slaughter. So David saved the, inhabit the inhabitants of Caleb. 
And it came to pass when 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 Abathar, the son of Ahimelech, fled to David to Caleb, that he came down with an ephod in his hand, and it was told Saul that David was come to Caleb. And Saul said, God hath, hath delivered him into my hand, for he is shut in by entering into a town that has gates, <coughs> gates and bars. And Saul called all the people together to war to go down to Caleb and to besiege David and his men. And David knew that Saul secretly practiced mischief against him. And he said to Ebethar, the, the priest, bring hither the ephod. Then said uh, David, O Lord God of Israel, thy servant hath certainly heard that Saul seeketh to, to come to Kela to destroy the city for my sake. Will the men of Kela deliver me up into his hand? Will Saul come down as thy servant hath be, had heard? O Lord God of Israel, I beseech thee, tell thy servant. And the Lord said, he will come down. Then said David, will the men of Achilla deliver me and my men into the hand of Saul? And the Lord said, they will deliver thee up. Then David and his men, which were about 600, arose and departed out of Achilla and, and went whithersoever they went, went whithersoever they could go. And it was told Saul that David was escaped from Kela, and he forbear to go forth. And David abode in the wilderness in strongholds, and remained in a mountain in a mountain in the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul sought him every day, but God delivered him not into his hand. And David saw that Saul was come out to seek his life, and David was in the wilderness of Ziph in a wood. And Jonathan's son, and, and Jonathan, Saul's son, arose and went to David into the wood and strengthened his hand in God. And he said unto him, Fear not, for the hand of Saul, my father, shall not find thee, and thou shalt be king over Israel, and I shall be next, next unto thee, and that also Saul, my father, knoweth. And they too made a covenant before the, before the Lord. And David abode in the wood. And Jonathan went to his house. And then came up to then came up the, the Ziphites to Saul to to Gibeah, saying, Doth not David hide himself with us in strongholds in the wood, in the hill of Hachelah, which is on the south of Jeshimon? Now, therefore, O king, come down according to all the, the desire of thy soul to come down, and our part shall be to deliver him into the king's hand. And Saul said, Blessed be ye of the Lord, for ye have compassion on me. Go, I pray you, prepare yet, and know and see his place where, where his haunt is, and who hath seen him there, for it is told me that he dealeth very Suddenly, see therefore and take knowledge of of all the lurk, lurking places where he hideth himself, and come ye again to me with the certainty, and I will go with you, and it, it shall come to pass, if he be in the land, that I will search him out throughout all the thousands of Judah. And they arose and went to Ziph before Saul, uh, but David and his men were in the wilderness of Moab, in the plain of the south of Jishimon. Saul also and his men went to seek him, and they told David, wherefore he came down in, into a rock and abode in the wilderness of Moab. And when Saul heard that, he pursued after David in the wilderness of, of Maon. And Saul went on the side of the mountain, and David and his men on that side of the mountain, and David made made haste to get away for fear of Saul. And Saul and his men encompassed David and his men round about to take them. 
And there came a messenger to Saul saying, Hasty and come, for the Philistines have invaded the land. Wherefore Saul returned from pursuing after David and went against the Philistines. Therefore they called that place Salaham Magkalah. And David went up from thence and dwelt in strongholds at Engadai. Mark, that's more than 23 verses. 29. I meant to say 29. <laughs> you said 23. I was like, what's Who, going on here? Who's counting? Uh, I, I, I did find some vari variations of what Peter was reading, but I, I didn't find any discrepancies. It was just reworded. It was worded differently. That's all. But I, I didn't find any, nothing like what happened last chapter. Uh, did you pick anything up that was confusing? No, just, or Just a couple words here and there. Yeah. Nothing nothing different. First Samuel's been a hard book, Peter. Doing this what we're doing, the comparison and all that. It's 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 probably been the hard the hardest one so far. Um in verse twenty eight, that place it says uh, in the king in the ESV it says called the rock of escape. Can you read the verse twenty eight completely, please? It says in so the Saul, ESV. So Saul returned pursuing after David and went against the Philistines. Therefore, that place was called the Rock of, of Escape. And in the King James, what is it called? <laughs> Ask Peter to say it. It's Selahamakikoth. It's one word. Selah yeah, that's what I. That's what I see. That's what I see in the Geneva. Yeah. All right. Well, guys, I my brain is fried. I'm done. Put a fork in me. I'll have to get back to you on that verse 5 from, uh, what was it, uh, 1 Samuel 22? Was that where we, 1 Samuel 22, 5? Or 21, 5. 21, 5. 21, 5. I have, I have to get, let me, let me look at that, guys. I'm going to have to check the Hebrew and see what I can come up with. All right, Pete, well, why don't you pray for us? And uh, thank you, everybody, for being on a little bit later, I know, but. I do enjoy, you know, sometimes we need to be, we need to get stretched out. We need to get, you know, our, our body. The, the thing is, like with muscles, right? You don't grow unless you push, you push those muscles. You exert, right? And I think with our spiritual muscles as well, uh, sometimes you need, and Peter, Dr. Rasmussen did that to me. Dr. Rasmussen, he stretched, like, honestly, when I, when I first came to to my the Faith Baptist, his teaching was not easy, Peter. It was not, but he caused us all to um to really dig. And I think that's that was you know one of the reasons why I I developed the love for God's Word. So the what we're doing, it I know it's hard and it takes work. But your your spiritual muscles will grow; they'll get strong, and you uh, your appetite for for this will get will increase. It's just like it's just like you know a good piece of apple pie. You just man, cobbler. I wanted I, yeah cobbler. There you go. All right, Pete, <laughs> cobbler. <laughs> Pete, you want to close this in prayer? You're muted. I think you're, I think he's muted. Yeah, Mr. Ricky Ticky's in the house, by the way, Peter. So behave. He's still muted. There he is. He's back. All there right, Peter. Is. There he is. There he goes. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. Well, we're almost done, guys. One, one more. Uh, no, two more nights, Mr. and we're... Mr. Ewell Gibbons himself. <laughs> two more nights. Hey, you know we're... what I did? I went to the store the last time I went to the store. I was looking for that stuff. They don't have it anymore. I don't think they don't I sell that. They don't sell that brand anymore, huh? No more grape nuts. He's the last. He's the last <sighs> grape. That was good stuff. Besides the blue, blue, blue man group. Grape nuts. Oh, that was so good. 
Those those cereals were excellent. Yep. Oh man. All right, Peter. What would it be like to go back in time? My daughters asked me, Dad, if you can go back in time, which which era would you like to be in? And they said, and you can't pick Jesus' time. I said, oh, okay. Well, um, I don't know. Probably Adam. I'll go back to him and say, hey, what were you thinking? Well, that would change no. the whole Bible. Then we have yeah, to read about you all day long. I know, right? I, someone would have messed up. That's right. No, I don't know what era I would have wanted to live in. Maybe we could have back in the Roman times, right? What do you think? No, we probably would have been fed to the lions, Peter. We would have been fed to the lions. All right. Well, let's uh, let's have Peter close us in prayer. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Omar. Heavenly Father, we come before your mighty throne. We love you, Lord. We are thankful that we're able to come together in fellowship. And we know that when two or more gathered, you are here in our midst. We thank you for the, the insight, the wisdom. We thank you for Brother Omar. Again, we thank you for his safe return home, him and his family. We thank you for Brother Mark. We thank you for Dots, for Mia, for Anita. We pray for the Shubin family. Our Father, I pray that you continue to strengthen us, fill us with the Holy Spirit, guide our steps. I pray for those that find our channel that they also would be stretched, stretched and and have their hearts turned towards you. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, uh, Mark, what's for dinner? What was for dinner? What now, was for dinner? Now you're going to give me uh, give me uh, 17 minutes. I'll tell you what's for breakfast. Man. Well, Peter, did, is, did Dorothy cook tonight or no? We're going to have a nice uh, salad. Salad. Oh, man. I love it. Now he does. Now he, see, I could have been driving over this whole time. Man, Peter, salad, you. salads are good. There's no, there's nothing wrong with salads. A little oh, side of again. Joe Peeps. That's Joe Peeps. A little side of pasta wouldn't ha wouldn't hurt either. No, that's Joe Peeps right there. That's that's right there is uh, Yule Gibbons. Okay, that's the re <laughs> that's the real Yule. What's that? That's the Mr. Grape Nuts, uh, I, Peter. I love Grape Nuts. What happened to him? That's him right there. Uh, no, no. What ha what happened to Yule Gibbons? He, they ran out of purple underwear. <laughs> this guy had so much colonial silver. You're right. You're right. All right, guys. Colonial silver, when you put it on your skin, you go in the sun, it turns black. We used to oh, do that. Man. We used to Ringo, do that Ringo Cat, Saint. Awesome, guys. Well, I'm going to give my brain a little break, guys, and uh, try to get some sleep tonight, so... Let's come back at it tomorrow and uh sale on them, Omar. The what the grape nuts? No. What do you which one? Oh the wisdom. Wizard. The wizard. The wizard in Kansas, you know? Oh the They're wizard. Out. Okay, yeah. Click my heels three times, Dorothy. Okay, we'll see. watch that movie next, Mark, okay? Man, if you have to explain it, it ain't worth telling. You. Oh, there we All go. Right. All right. All right. Peter, right. Peter you're, you're going to buy your, you're going to buy her a nose ring, Peter. I don't know about that. I tie a rope on it. And, <laughs> oh, I'll see you guys. I'll see yeah, you guys right. tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night, everyone. Good night.